You good. We can we can start talking now. You good. You straight. You ain't got to worry about it. I'm going to do that anyway. <laughs> I can't even hear nothing in your mic. That's because I'm not close to it. Bucko. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, How do we even start this shit? We can start on some other shit. Um, and then we can dive in. What's too late now? <laughs> That's why I'm going to start the video at. <laughs> you are trash. <laughs> um, So we had some backlash. About what? From from our from our I'm saying our like you had something to say about it, but from um the war shows. It was interesting. Yeah, they won't. Oh, we got a pro- they won't beat you up. Oh, we got a problem here? Basically. Nah, it was funny. It was interesting because I said what I said. I got a DM. I said this on the last episode, but I'm saying it to you because you're back. Oh, hand claps for keeping back. First he was off. out. Uh, uh, she wasn't mm-mm. feeling well. Mm-mm. So I had to call in reinforcements. This nigga is lying. They can't hear you. You mumbling in the mic. Gavin did a pod last week without me. He didn't even invite me on. You didn't even tell me. You didn't say, hey, he, me and T think about doing a pod. Nothing against Tequila. I love her. It's not even her fault. It's Gavin's fault. I could have came up here. You had DM here too. Darnell was an accident. So? Darnell, so for those who not know, Darnell was not supposed to be here. He did the pie without me, y'all. Darnell hit me up. Disrespectful. Was like, y'all, I'm back from Columbia. I'm a Where Columbia you ass. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. It's too late now, y'all. I didn't heard it. <laughs> um, and so I was like, cool. I'm doing a pie with Teak, and he was like, oh, that's cool. I'm on the way, and he showed up. So we here now, but we're here. Whatever. We had a pre-pie meeting. Shout out to Kila. I still like her. He was late to the pre-pie meeting. I was not. Okay, let me ask you this. When you're going to something, let's say it's not work, I was it's here not at 402. Church, how late can you be when it's like a business friend meeting? You need to be there within five minutes. Okay, you was late. You supposed to be five minutes early, right? Yeah, according to drumline, I guess. But Oh, I love that movie. I want to watch Stump the Yard tonight. Um <laughs> How you get Stump the Yard from Drumline? Because um every time I think Chris about Chris Brown. Oh, okay, I get it. I get it. Chris Brown wasn't in Drumline. But you said stump Crunch the yard. Crunch again, I promise you, the pod will end. We will end the pod. But you said stump the yard because Chris Brown, he was only in there for like five minutes, but he was still there. Columbus Short. Columbus Short. Columbus you Short wasn't the yard. But, Yeah, but I want to watch that because um, I was thinking about stump the yard because you mentioned Drumline and the whole HBCU mm. fraternal thing. And so I was like, oh, okay. And then I was sending um, I was sending gifts to Teak yesterday and I, I was trying to send, I was trying to find when they was at the gardening thing and it was like, Whoops! That's enough. My cousin, the one that you're supposed to shoot, her brother's in that movie. Kersla? Mm-hmm. Shout out to Handclubs for Kersla. I definitely told her yesterday I would shout her out on the podcast. So now the pod definitely has to start before this section. So she clearly. But um, shout out to her, man. That's the what was her brother? What was he doing? He was an extra. He, he was, but he was on the um, the guys that look like the alphas. Okay. Um, when they was doing a little the alphas are the kappas. No, he had the black and gold on. He was holding the snake. When they were doing it. The... Yeah, something like that. He was on Columbus Short team. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought they shit was orange. Uh, it was black and gold. It always, it I always. Think, I don't know. I think whatever. it was black and gold. Oh, y'all let us know. Um, I, I know that my movie. Bear was in that movie. Barely. He was in there for five freaking minutes. I killed him. He, they took him out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we had a little backlash from two episodes ago. Um, for those who do not know, uh, please check out episode 53 if I'm staying correct, if I'm correct, but, um, I'm trying not to slouch over in this video because I want to have my posture correct. But in that we were talking about the Charlotte award shows, um, and we highlighted Carolina fashion awards and we highlighted the queen city awards. And I got a DM uh, in an email um, from the QC Awards wanting to know they wanted to talk. They did call. Um, I was in the middle of a pod when they called. And then I called them back. They didn't answer. And I let it ring for a long time. And then I thought they would reach back out. But they, they probably have no desire to. They have no reason to. And I'm not mad at them because everything I needed to say. And, oh, this is the funnier part. I was asking myself. If we got on the phone, what was going to come from that conversation? 
Sometimes you ever been in like an argument with a friend and you're always wondering like, yo, I wonder what's going to come from this conversation. And sometimes you don't have the conversations if you understand nothing will come from it. You thinking about it? Well, we just had an argument a couple of weeks ago. And we had a conversation. Well, we had a conversation on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and so something came from it. But the point is this. Um, Let me learn. I think you learn from any, any conversation. Yeah, but it's always like that first argument. Right. Not the one we had, because we've had disagreements and debates before. Oh, that, but that one was petty. Yeah, yeah, it's your fault. But the point is, um, with that. <laughs> petty, you petty. With, but the thing is, is like with them, I was thinking, what are they expecting to get from me? They wanted to fight you. Probably. They, they want five I, minutes outside. I, I felt like a cuss out was definitely coming. Mm -hmm. um, or at least like a you don't know shit was was coming, which I do not. I don't know nothing. I'm on, and you know, I think a lot of people. Um, I was thinking about it. I said, you know what? A lot of people probably get worked up. Ugh, so country. A lot of people probably get worked Work up. That. Worked up. But a lot of people probably get worked up and not understand that we comment on the Grammys, the BET Awards. We comment on, you know, their award show. We care. We comment on the Carolina Fashion Awards. Um, we talk about NBA. We talk. We're gonna talk about the Super Bowl if we ever get there. Like it's a lot of things we comment on and who gets awards, who deserve it, who shouldn't be there, and it's really just out of interest. Like we don't hate it. I was telling somebody I was in a Charlotte uh, photography group today, and I was like, "Yo, I really want us to win Podcast of the Year next year, even though it's from them, and even though I think, you know, the system may be broken. Like I think the Grammys is broken. Like we talked about BT." Uh, going back to the Grammys, you realize Summer Walker is not even nominated for a Grammy for Best R&B Album? No woman is nominated for Best R&B Album, which I find interesting. Who would be up there? Um, Summer Walker should be up there. Janae should be up there. Janae got nominated for Album of the Year, but I don't think R&B Album of the Year. So I find that interesting. But Summer Walker last year definitely had the Best R&B Album. She did have a nice album. And but she also rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Absolutely. After she did what the fuck she did. Ab oh, absolutely. And I found that we're going to get to that in a little bit. When we talk about Dallas, the restaurant situation, I want to talk about white acceptance there. But we get there. Um, so anyway, going back to these war shows. So when I got the DM, I was like, I don't know what they want to. I understand they probably at first like, yo, we need to talk. Like, why are we still here again? And then I did write to them and I said, yo, I sent y'all my information last year. I sent it the year before. Y'all have had my information because I sent them my email. They was like, no, this is a phone call conversation. I was like, if you just scroll up, it's just, the last three years, you guys have all asked for my information. Just nothing's came out of it. And they did reach out, and then nothing came out of that because we didn't talk. And then also, um, I was thinking, I was like, what do I need to say to them? I said everything I need to say in that 25 minutes. <laughs> the I fact that it was 25 minutes is beyond me. Yeah, because well, <laughs> I was just thinking, I was like, I was like, uh, I have nothing to say. You already said it. I had already said it. And I was like, so it's cool. It's there. So I, I was thinking, I was like, damn, if I pick up the phone or if they pick up the phone, I'm going to just be listening because I'm going to refer back to everything I had to say. But anyway, but it's cool. Shout out to them. Shout out to everybody that's nominated. I think voting ended yesterday um, before their war show, which is virtual, which is this is a plug for them. It is on December 19th, I think at seven o'clock. Rakim will be there. Um EMPD should be getting a special award. I pray. This is still in my hype. I pray in giving EMPD an award. Um, I pray that they talk about what they've done for the city of Charlotte. Um, if not, then I don't know why New York rap group should be getting a Charlotte award. But I'm <laughs> leaving that up for um, for there. But um, and it's virtual, so they probably saving a shit ton of money. But Shout out that to them. still expensive. Oh, yeah. Virtual stuff. Because, yeah, the AV team is not cheap. You know what I'm saying? But um, I hope it's done correctly. I hope it's done dope. And I hope it goes well. And I do hope, based off the DMs I got from other photographers, models, makeup artists, videographers, I do hope they make changes soon. Just based off of what I got in the information, the feedback I got. And not all the feedback was good. There's a couple of photographers like, fuck you. But uh, who cares? All right. Whatever, man. <laughs> um... <laughs> What are we getting to next? You got a new um got a new backdrop today. Yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I did. You like it? I loved it. And no, I'm not telling you where it's from. Yeah, you went on a little rant. I'm not telling nobody where the hell that shit from. Why? Because niggas copy. <laughs> so yesterday, I right. They like your greatness. They want to be like 
uh, a version of me. That sounds cool. Or that maybe they cute. look up to you for inspiration. Bruh. Ooh, inspiration. Inspirade. <laughs> December. Plug. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> Merch coming <coughs> spring 2021. So I'm in a studio yesterday and I was laughing because um, <clears throat> I think as photographers, as people, as uh, no matter what field you're in, sometimes you start digging in your field. Mm-hmm. And you start looking for people that do inspire you or people that you do follow or people that you do like the way they conduct business, handle business. And sometimes you will easily find your way of replicating them instead of being you. And so I was laughing because yesterday I was in a studio and somebody sent me uh, a photographer's information and they were like, just to let you know, this is copy and paste. And I was like, hmm. And then I was like, yo, people be having the same modifiers. They be having the same lights. They be having the same backdrops. My backdrop was custom. It cost a shit ton of money, but it was just one of those things. I was just like, damn, people really be out here copying. You know, (laughs) I was thinking back to that future line. When somebody asked future, why do you not record yourself in the studio? Free band. And he said, I give you everything else. I can't show you how to make the product. He was like, geez, man. And I was just thinking, I'm like, damn, this is super interesting. Now, mind you, I don't think I'm good enough. And also, I do believe I was in a position at one time where I was copying a photographer. And it was just like, so I was just like, damn, I'm trying to do the sets they're doing, the type of shoots they're doing. Their website look like mine. They um they got a new logo. I got to change my logo. They got a new uh, offering. To serve. Yeah. And I was biting. I was like, and then honestly, the photographer was like, chill. What'd you say? Mm-mm. I'm gonna put the mic. I'm gonna put the camera right on you. <laughs> um. So yeah, that was just an interesting. It was interesting, man, and it was kind of annoying because I was like, damn. Um. You didn't even try to hide it. What you was doing? When I actually have other and um, uh, other photographers say that and say, "Yo, this looks like a, like a replica." I was like, "All right, bro, here we go." And then, oh, the funnier part was. That wasn't even the funny part. The funny part was the other photographers trying to give me words of encouragement. And I was like, it's okay. Live, breathe, smell. I'm like, (laughs) and one of them niggas, I wanted to be like, bro, you copied. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, let it out. Go ahead, let the people know. And I'm like, you, you, you copied every damn day. So I'm like, God dang, bro. And you up here going to hit me up talking about some shit. Let's go ahead and bleep that. Just I'm making a bleep notepad on what we need to bleep out. But I was like, God dang it, bro. Goodness. But anyway. Um, anyway. We need to start the this podcast. The time has come for us. What? To say. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking for. A, uh, we ain't got no song. We have no intro song. Play whatever your heart desires. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. Unless you want me to sing something. Please don't. You know, I'm a singer. Back Shut in the up. day. I could blow balls. Pause. Did you say you could blow balls and then say pause after that? I said I could blow pause. Oh, bruh. Let's play a top song off my top 20. Um, We need to... um um um. Damn, niggas is probably like, all right, Gavin, y'all better quick this up. We definitely gonna cut all this part out. Damn. <laughs> I hate this part. Yo, um. Woo! Yo, I wanna thank everybody. Um, it's been an interesting year. It's been an interesting uh, podcast. This year has been ridiculous. How so? Um, we next level posted our video from uh, CIAA today. Yeah, I've seen that and the picture with um, me and my um, friends from my tra- from workout school. class. Workout class. From school. <laughs> only thing I was thinking of is just the last time we was outside. That's the <laughs> last time we was outside, bro. And so I was like, "Yo, I wish 
I don't think we should have known. Like, if they would have been like, yo, this is the last weekend y'all get to be outside, I think me and you would have went harder. And I don't think it was, it was like half a step left for us to go. I don't think I need to go any harder. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm, you know, I am happy. Every time I see that video, I'm like, yo, that was the last time we was outside and we went in. Brittany said I was cussing around her aunt and stuff. She you would told not me. let me live that down. Yeah, because oh, Brittany brought you home. She said, why? And I was laughing. You said, "Kid, you want some chicken? No, nah, I'm good. I had like two pieces. Sitting on the floor eating chicken. I was like, God, Libra. But, um, fun. you know, I, I want to say thank you because starting off this podcast, I really had all intentions of doing, um, I don't know, 20 episodes, 25 episodes, just because I have done a pod before and it's tough. It's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of dedication. It's a lot of editing. It's a lot of shit, right? It's a lot of work. It, it does go into a lot of work. And then some of it you can't delegate. Like, just to put it in perspective, every time we do a podcast, Keys, what can I do? What can I do? And I'm like, it's really nothing for you to do. This is why I say it's his podcast. He literally does all the work. It's yours. It's ours, though. because And we're, we're transitioning it to ours because we do a lot of stuff. Um, and we got a lot of stuff planned. But I do want to thank everybody for listening. Hand class for our listeners. Because they actually... <laughs> They respect us. Um, so I want to thank them. And before I hand it out to Key, because Key going to give not one thank you. She just going to say thank you. I do want to thank Key because uh, this was. <sighs> all right. That's all I got to say about you. <laughs> nah, but for real though, like um, when we started the podcast, I was just like, all right, I didn't want a co-host. Well, I didn't, not that I didn't want one. I didn't know who to find. And me and you talked about photographers that have on plenty of times. And I was like, nope, 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 mm-hmm. nope. And then I was like, maybe we can get a model. And I'm like, they finicky on shoots. They definitely going to be finicky on the podcast. And then Key was like, well, I'll just come over one day. And I was like, all right, whatever. And she came. And then y'all liked her. And so now she here on every episode. Hey. Oh, my gosh. And so, um, but thank you because you stuck with it. I appreciate you. Half the shit. You don't be knowing what we're talking about, but you shall be acting, so it'll be good. And then the other part of it is is thank you because uh, you don't have to do it. And you hear sometimes on time. Yeah, because I'm so busy with my life. I just, you, might, you know. You might got a nigga out there who don't want you on this podcast. Is it not in focus? No, I was just making a face. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll put it back on you. Ain't no nigga out here. All right. Um, you got any thank yous you want to thank? Any thank any people? Oh, I hear my stomach in the mouth. I don't know. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we gotta go through this pod. <laughs> Shit, buddy. Hurry up. Yo, for those who not know, hungry. bro, my stomach growled in the mic. I'm, I heard it in the headphones. I did. That's so disgusting. I hope y'all didn't did hear Did you that. not eat today? I had tuna and mashed potatoes before the pod. Oh, that's why your stomach growled. You might need to go in that bathroom. Mike, I cooked the tuna too long. Uh, you ain't cook nothing. I overheated it. Hurry up. <laughs> um, I, I didn't do anything, but, you know, thanks, I guess. Thanks to the people for watching. You know, shout out to me um, in. <laughs> shout out to the guests. No, I'm here. <laughs> shout out to all the guests we've had on. Let me give you all a little, little name drops right quick. Um, shout out to Alex and Josh. Uh, Alex from Hair Wraps and Lipstick Podcast. Woo! Josh, the creative gent. Um, they have the highest listen to episode. It was amazing. It was great there. Uh, shout out to Rickland and Corey, who Woo! both are tied for the second um, listen to episode, which is funny because Corey was like, don't try me because I will pass everybody. And I was like, do you think, bro, <laughs> more listens for us. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and then shout out to everybody else. Uh, Brandon Gate, shout out to About Face Makeup, shout out to Alana, shout out to who else we didn't have on here? Darnell. Uh, shout out to Teague. Polly Mathis. Shout out to Eric. I think so. I just call him Eric because I'm like, I think it is Polly Mathis. Angel. Mino. Oh, shout out to Angel. Shout out to Mino. Um, Shout out to everybody that listens faithfully. Henry. I think we are. We ain't not shouting. I'm going to cut that part. I'm going to bleep Henry's name again. So uh, shout out to Henry. I just did it again. (laughs) Shout out to Kersla. Even though I don't know how to say your name. And even though your cousin did cancel her photo shoot on me within 48 hours. reason. She was trying to get me sick. <laughs> so. She probably doesn't even have the COVID. She definitely don't. But it's okay. Because <laughs> I think that day. I think I was going to be busy. No, you said it was going to be cold. It was going to be cold. Was it last Saturday? Oh, it was supposed to Saturday? rain this weekend. Yeah, it's supposed to rain on Friday. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Whew. Do I got outside shoes? Oh, shit. I was talking gotcha. with somebody about the rain. 
<laughs> Hold on, let's get our thank yous out. Oh, um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I do want to thank everybody. I appreciate y'all. Um, I love y'all. Please, please, next year, uh, we want to grow this better. We want to have on more guests. We want to have better production because clearly, this is cool and all, but we need we can do a little bit better. But, I think you do pretty freaking fantastic yeah but it'd be good if we had like food catered and liquor catered you don't you don't even drink no more on the pod that is true clarify me (laughs) that's because i'll be slurring my words i'll be and then he complain when i have my snacks hell yeah but your stomach don't be growling Um, because i have my snacks but yeah shout out to everybody and without further ado let's start the pod Hold on. Got a little liquor today. Should we do a song? A little nah, malt liquor. Step. Welcome to the Paid and Exposure Podcast, a podcast about helping our community of photographers to reach the next level in their business. We just leveled up. Now he's your host, Charlotte photographer, Gavin B. Can I just pay you an exposure? No. I tried to do the Darnell like he did last week when I wasn't here because I wasn't invited. So, no, 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 no. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. I, Come again. I hate you. Um. So, <laughs> this is episode, episode drum roll. Please, Key is supposed to know. Key, what's your guess? No, I don't know because I wasn't here last week, so. I'm, it's 56. Let me stop. Shout out to episode 56 of the... I'm going to stop being petty. Pain and Exposure Podcast. If this is your first time... Nah, please. Let the jokes fly. We need drama. We need drama. We need niggas to think that we You want me to punch you? Please don't hit me. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But, nah, but this is episode 56. Uh, For those who not know, this is the Pain and Exposure Podcast. This is a photography podcast, but we are ratchet, ghetto. You think if I hit you, your wife would be mad? Absolutely. But if we would... If if only if I was serious though, right? Not like yeah, playful, yeah. like ah. Oh. Yeah, you hit me all the time anyway. But then if I was like, we got into it, and I was like, you think she try to fight me? Oh yeah, she knocking you out. She got hands. <laughs> Sorry man, I gotta take a side man. She gonna let you. You out. better take his wife's side. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Ain't, ain't, come on bro. Yeah hey, yeah 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 yeah. We bang. <laughs> shut up. Did we do the intro? I can't fucking remember shit. Boy. Um. So today's topic is. Um. So for those who not know, we do have the no more pie questions that need to be answered. And this is actually one of the questions that I felt like deserved a full segment on its own. And it's from my homeboy. Shout out. If you're on Facebook, look up no more pie by Gavin B. Um, Shout out to Andre. Um, He asked this question. He said, what did you have to change to really get your business moving? Your booty moving. So, um, and I thought about that and I honestly, um, I don't want to make it sound cliche, but I had to get serious. Um, and I think all of us, we, you've had, besides what you're doing now, I'm pretty sure you've had other business. Um, no, I'm talking about with Inspirate. I'm pretty sure you had other business ideas and ventures that you thought of. And the difference of where they are now and where Inspirate is, you took yourself serious. You know, you say, all right, I want to invest in myself. I want to create a business. And so when it comes to photographers, the number one mistake I always notice photographers do is they have fast shit. Um, And excuse me, excuse me, (laughs) gassy. Um, I don't want to sound like, all right, black people, we are 400 years behind the A-ball, right? Um, And sometimes when it comes to business, running a business correctly, we're also behind. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of us have our hood business, right? Well, we're not registered. We're not, um, we're not legal. Shit ain't, mm-hmm. re- you know, shit ain't registered downtown. I mean, pop that cat entertainment. LL, it's not an LLC downtown. It's just something you came up with. You put it somewhere and shout out to, um, shout out to vet. Um, one of T close friends This who said pop that cat LLC. I'm about to punch you mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. real. Just like that. Ooh, ooh. Shout out to um, vet. Go ahead. But shout out to Vet because Vet, I remember one time Vet had a business and she told me, she asked me because I made her like some ugly graphic. This is back in college. And she was like, can you take that down? And I was like, sure, I can. I was like, why? What's up? And she said, well, I've never registered. I don't want nobody to steal it. Because some people are in the business of stealing domains, in the business of stealing LLC names and making you pay them for whatever to transfer. So I say all that to say... um, the number one thing that changed for me, I took myself seriously. I figured out how to make myself legit, um, to put it in perspective, in making myself legit during quarantine, 
I was awarded about 15 G's in government money that I don't have to pay back. Actually, more than that. But don't tell nobody that. Yeah, don't run up on me. I ain't got it no more. Well, it's gone. You can run up on me, but I ain't got it. What's wrong with but you? The, but, well, I want people to understand, like, that came from literally having an LLC. Why you didn't give me none? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but some of that was like literally a LLC. Some of that was literally saying I've been in business. Now, some of that was luck. Um, out of all that money, you had to create your business before 2020. So, oh, okay. you know what I'm saying? So it was like, that's a lucky part of it. Right. But then there was also grants that people in our group have won thousands of dollars that people in our group have won just because they were a legal business. Um, with that being said, I figured out what programs to help make my business operate, um, which is all of this is under the umbrella of like taking my business seriously and saying I want to grow. And then also uh, when I talk to people, whether it's you as a friend, whether it's your cousin who's a client, whether it's um, my family members who are now clients or whether it's the random person from the law firm I'm doing headshots for next week who is now a client, I take myself seriously. I figure out what makes my business run, what doesn't. Funny enough, I was in a Charlotte um, Instagram group not too long ago, and someone was asking about window shopping clients. And I said, yo, they're probably window shopping because your website is missing information. And come to find out that person's website was missing a lot of information. So I was like, yo, you got to eliminate those things. But when you take yourself seriously and you invest in yourself, whether it's images, whether it's a commercial, whether it's marketing materials, whether it's shaking the right hands, whether it's, you know, whatever the case may be, once you take yourself seriously, your shit will grow. So definitely, yo, Andre, keep that in mind. Um, I don't know where you're at. If you ever want to sit down and talk, please let me know. DM me. We can actually get on the phone and chop it up because I do think it is a big important thing um, what to really get your business moving. So anyway, uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get to these questions. These silly questions. This is the No More Pie questions that need answer presented to you by your ad can go here. Take it away, <laughs> Key. <laughs> Take it away. All right. First, we got Jackson Avery. <laughs> Who the fuck is that? If you watch Grey's Anatomy, oh, y'all know I've been on my Grey's Anatomy kick. I have literally started from the beginning. I'm almost done. They all on Netflix, except for the new season. It's on Hulu on ABC. But NBC. How many seasons is that? 16. I'm on 16. I just started 16 yesterday. Wow. <clears throat> anyway, Jackson Avery is a character. I don't like the Asian girl eyebrows. <clears throat> she gone anyway. Jackson Ooh, Avery is, she ain't die. She just oh. not. Listen, huh. Jackson Avery is a character on Grey's Anatomy, played by the fine, fine, fine Jesse Williams. Oh, my gosh. Jesse Williams just got light eyes. He's still fine. Even if his eyes were dark, he is fine. So, so all right. It's colorism. We're going to get to Mulatto in a little bit. Go ahead. I ain't no colorist. <laughs> he is fine. We he is fine. Hell, if he was Okay, fine, we understand he's fine. fine. Anyway, we got Avery. God dang. <laughs> Woo! She caught this nigga fine about 30 times. He fine. <sighs> what did anyway, he say? Um, <laughs> other than pay and exposure, what's the most unrealistic budget a client has? Oh my for a gosh. Job? Um, G's. Oh my gosh. G's? Like thousands? No, 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 no. I had a. <laughs> no, no bullshit. I had a client who was getting married. I'm embarrassed to tell it, so I'm going to tell the truth. Um, uh, I'm embarrassed to tell it because I think if I lie, y'all going to know I'm lying. Nobody would know, but now you got to because they think you're going to lie. No, no, no. But I've said things on this podcast and we've got to where we're going to eat at and you be like. Nigga, I know you was lying. I know you switched some details <laughs> up. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I couldn't say that person's actual name. But now we got a bleep feature. I be, be bleeping shit out. Um, I had a guy. Squirrel rant. This is exactly what you do. Okay. Why you say a squirrel? Cause that's that's what people like a dog when you're talking to a dog and they be like they see. Oh, they see a squirrel. Oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, we went back. That was a rewind. Um, so I had a nigga who hit me up for his wedding one time, and bruh was like, "Hey, I'm getting married. Um, it's gonna be a regular reception. It was only gonna be like seventy five to hundred people. Back then, I thought that was a small wedding. Now I realize like the ideal number is like one twenty five to one fifty. So seventy five to one hundred is not a small wedding. It's just like a 
regular size wedding. Mm-hmm. The big weddings when it's like 250, 200, mm-hmm. and you be like, do y'all really even like these people that's in here? But whatever. That's mm-hmm. not the point. The point is, um, he was having about 75, 200 people. And he, when he booked me, he only wanted me for two hours. And I was like, no, nah, I can't do that. And so he was like, uh, he said, well, what do you do? So I sent him my packages. The lowest wedding package I had was six hours at that time. This was years ago. And uh, bro wanted to pay me. He goes, you know what? Let's just do four or five hours. That'd be perfect. And we met, we was at Starbucks. I said, six. he was cheap. So I said, how much you want to pay? Bro I said, $250 for my wedding. Oh, that's an hour. Two I hours. Said, I said, no, no, no. <laughs> and so he was like confused because he thought that he was really about. And what I realized was he was a, he was like a car salesman, but he was also, he, that wasn't his job. He actually, I found out I had a good job and I, I can't even tell y'all how now. Um, I knew somebody that was working at the place where he was getting married at. And they told me, they said, oh, no, he works here. He has a good job. Mm-hmm. And um, his wife had a decent job. And he wanted to pay me for a four-hour wedding. He wanted to pay me 250 And I said no. And, oh, he was the type to just try to bargain you. And so I was like, nah. He was like, all right, cool, whatever. Then he called me. He said, hey, Gavin. I told him I was like, I'll do it for 400 And he said, Okay, I think about it. So I was like, all right. Because in my mind, I'm like, if you say no, it's cool. And this is back in the day when I was already making, like, my expenses was super low. I didn't really need, like, I wanted the money, but I didn't need it. And I didn't realize, I didn't understand that I was actually being underpaid so bad. So um, I just remember, bruh, called me one day. He said, hey, Gavin, talk to my wife. We're actually going to go in a different direction. I said, cool. Because in my mind, I'm already being underpaid. He said, her niece is in middle school and is interested in photography and we figured this would be the perfect time for her to take pictures and i said you want her niece your niece to take pictures at your wedding and he goes yeah and i said oh this is her first wedding he said yeah he said do you have any ideas on what type of camera to get her he said we figure instead of giving you the 400 we can buy a camera for her I said, oh, so she's never taken these photo, taken photos before. Absolutely. <laughs> I said, yeah, if you go to Target, they have a thing. Sony makes a thing called a cyber shot. It's only like $100. And you, that'll do the trick. And he said, okay, great. He hung up the phone. And at that time, I was pissed because I was like, yo, he, this nigga really just tried me. Oh, we got a problem You know how to pull it out. And so I was like, yo, I'm, I got to scrap him. And so I, I was... Me and Karina was just friends. So I called Karina. I said, yo, let me tell you about this dude. And so I'm like going on. She was like, yo. She said just a friend. She was. And I was like, yo. She was like, you going to save so much money not dealing. He called me back a month later. Hey, Gavin. He said his name. I was like, I don't know who this is. Sir. And he was like explaining to me. I was like, yo, I got to check that date. And if I do, it's not going to be the same amount. And I upped it. It still wasn't enough. And he booked it. And girl, you should have seen her damn. You saw the braid. What y'all do when y'all braid something in? What y'all hear? Uh, it's not a lace front. What's the little shit when you wave in? Weave in, um It's a sew-in. A sew-in. The whole thing was show. You could see it. And I just remember my. I was showing these pictures to my sister. And she goes, she tried it. And I'm like not understanding what's going on. I'm like, what? She said she thought that was cute. Because she made it key like a design. And it was just sitting there. And my sister said, she tried it. But yeah. Anyway, that was the cheapest thing. You went on the whole, whole rant. Why well, am I might send this to him? Next. All right. Next, we got Corey Bennett. <laughs> this is not Corey Bennett. <laughs> Corey was on last week's. <laughs> Corey, we. I'm so done with Corey. Have you ever loved somebody? Shut up and get to the shit so we can go eat. I'm hungry. Shit. We we all know we are just stomach twenty miles away. Have you ever had a session where all the photos turned out trash? Woo, yes. <laughs> do you roll with it to see if client says anything or do you reshoot? Um, shout out to the Daily Special Charlotte. Um, Damn, all of them. <laughs> huh? What? Literally all of them? There's no way. Oh, yeah. Ain't no um, way. I had a session one time. You want the truth? I ain't even seen her, her pictures. I ain't even seen them shits. Never sent them. 
uh, it was a collab, and I was it. I was taking her pictures, and I was taking her pictures, and I was flying to Vegas the next day for my bachelor trip. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Or was I flying? Yeah, yeah. I was I was flying to Vegas the next day, so I told her I said, um, me and her was supposed to shoot right. Shorty decides that uh, she was an hour late for a session, which I, I, it was raining so bad that I was, it was one of them things where she was like 15 minutes late. And I'm like, damn, she late. But I'm like, it's cool. Then it started pouring so bad that you couldn't see. So I was like, all right, I'm stuck here. And I took her pictures and I had a great attitude about it because I was just like, yeah, I'm going to Vegas the next tomorrow for my bachelor's trip. I do not care. That's what, that was wrong with you. Absolutely. And then her makeup was trash. No, not blame on her makeup. You oh, was trash. Oh, no, it was trash. I got to find these pictures and send them to you because I still no. think I have them. They are awful, god awful. And, like, she she didn't even put highlights. She, like, slapped the shit right, the highlight on her you face. You just slap your face. Yeah, but she had, like, the little helmet, the little C on her face for the highlighter. And it was just all gold. She had just got her braids done. And the fu- what pissed me off was she said that um, she had not been sleeping 24 hours because she went to the club. She stayed out to four. Um, she said. So y'all both was trash. Yeah, yeah, and so it was all bad. Her eyes was. So I was like, all right. And so I remember I went to Vegas. I forgot about her pictures. When I got back, I was like, do I send her her shits? And I looked at him. I was like, nah, these ain't even worth. So ready to go to Vegas? Like he ain't been there twenty thousand times. Was the first time I went. And so I was like, she's not getting her pictures. The first time you went to Vegas was your bachelorette trip. Bachelorette. Mm, My bad. <laughs> Your best trip. That's a nice question. That's a nice question. Woo, you getting married. She was fun. I'm going next year too. Um, Jasmine Sullivan. I hate the way she sings with her, like her lips and her teeth. No, don't talk about Jasmine Sullivan. She no, can sing. No, I didn't say she can't sing. I said I hate the way she sings with her lips. They be she kills it though. Amazing singing. I'm gonna kill you. I'm just kidding. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Kidding. I ain't no killer, but don't push me. Go ahead. Pew, pew. Um, Jazz said, what's a good consumer friendly camera between six hundred to a hundred dollars? She's only familiar with Sunny and Canon. 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 Um, so at first when I saw these questions, I had the idea of saying, yo, I hate when people ask this, just go on B and H, type in your budget, they'll list a bunch of cameras and just pick. All right. Um Next. however, <laughs> for Jazzy Faye, I will say this. Um if I was you, if you want, go mirrorless, look up something. First of all, your budget is too wide. 600 to 1200 that's too big. Like, that's just too much. To put it in perspective, if you're paying rent, you're not able to pay $600 in rent and $1,200 and be in the same apartment. You show the own because you could, <laughs> you could upgrade with a $300 difference. Exactly. So um, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's too big. So what I'm saying, um, if I was you, I would look at seeing if you can get an A7 III or a Canon R. Um, they both mirrorless. And if not, go a little bit down. Canon R, I swear for love. Well, I got Canon R5. I'm, I'm with the big club. You know what I'm saying? Finally. Canon did comment. Oh, shout out to Canon. No, no, shout out. Canon, it took you 20 years to get this thing on camera. I'm trying, I'm trying to get plugged in, man. I'm trying to get plugged in. Don't hate on the goat. Y'all see me right now? This is the <laughs> camera that took 12 months to get here. He ordered it in 2018. It wasn't even out then. I hate you. <laughs> um, but it's here. So uh, I posted a picture of Desiree on Facebook. Oh, yeah, like And that. Canon, um, they liked it and commented. So send a check, Canon. Thank you. And Desiree. Send a check, Desiree. Love you, though. Um, all right. But shout out to all those questions. If you do have questions, feel free to comment on Instagram, Facebook, DM me. You can write key. We should do a no more pie questions for key to answer next time. Ooh, I like that idea. It's going to be interesting. I got a question. Okay. Do y'all photographers be, um, that's so country. Country. Um, discriminating against y'all clients? Yes. In what way? Um, I'm not saying they should. I know f- I we we've heard me bitch about this before. There's people who do not shoot dark skin models or dark skin clients because they can't. Uh, there's there, and let me tell you, and this is I don't know if that's where you're going with this, but what I will say is, if you go online, there's a ton of photographers whose portfolio is only white folks. 
There's um so or people of a lighter hue. Let's so go I, like that. Well, well so, we could dig a little deeper. So say it's not more so a skill thing, but more so, oh, I just don't like black people, so I'm not going to shoot them. Or I don't like this type of person, so I'm not going to shoot them. Um, not that you can't do it, because clearly you have you can have the skills to do that. But for something that's to. yeah, yeah. Like, um, I don't. Well, my thing is this: I don't never think I don't. I've never ran across a photographer who has chose not to shoot with somebody for the color of their skin because they just don't want to. I'm sure it may exist. I'm sure in every business there's somebody that's racist. But um, other things, color, no. Um, I see a lot of photographers who post like they're LGBTQ plus uh, friendly. And that always makes me raise my eyes because I'm like, who isn't? But I imagine there are some photographers who have certain... um, I don't even want to say the word morals because I don't think it's a moral thing. I think that's that's the cheap way. Homophobe. They might be homophobic or they have like their religious reasons why they can't do business with you, which is not a religious thing at all. But that's a whole nother subject. I think it's BS. But um, yeah, I, I imagine I think I, I let me put like this. I think it's unfair for me to say that I uh, that is people out there who I'm not for sure if they do or do not do that when I know there's. Uh, people are part of that community who say hey no i've actually been discriminated it's the reason why i'm asking this question yeah so i imagine so but i don't know why i mean i guess for me um i've been in positions where i've had people ask me to do certain shoots that is from that community and i've been like no um part of that because i wasn't comfortable with it and it wasn't like oh we're engaged it wasn't like uh we're getting married i've done engagement shoots um, I'm doing a LGBTQ wedding next year, and it's going to be bomb. And if you see the dude on Facebook, he is funny. This nigga is a comedian. Shout out to Daryl or Daryl. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I don't know him. I just follow him on Facebook, and he's fucking hilarious. My name is Daryl, but it really pounds Daryl. Shut you, up. You seen that from um, Saturday Night Live? Look up Darrell Dash on Facebook. I promise you, you will never. He's the one oh, who Somebody said, else posted about him before. He's funny as shit. He asked everybody how much they spent on mac and cheese for Thanksgiving. And everybody was like $50, $60. I'm like, ain't no fucking way. Did he go to our school? Is he from North Carolina? Yeah, I think he did go to his school. Teak know him. I think she, Mino knows him too. He's funny as shit. Shout out to Teak and Mino. <laughs> Y'all was a chick. Oh, check, 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 check. Um, so those situations, those situations, uh, it wasn't those situations. Somebody wanted me to shoot. Um, um, uh, one dude wanted. Uh, um, Booty uh, shot. He wanted. Yeah, he pretty much. He wanted some thirst trap picks. And I was like, I'm just not around for it. And I also, however, to be fair, and um, at that time, I wasn't shooting women boudoir. And I told him, I was like, I wouldn't do that for that. And I told him, I was like, the only boudoir I do is for chicks, um, for their husbands. I was like, this ain't for your man. This is for you. You know, whatever. And he, w- he was cool with it. The dude was like, nah, I respect that. I was like, yeah. I was like, if you go on my page, you don't see that nowhere on my page. It ain't like I'm discriminating on you because of this. But I was like that. Um, I had a homeboy, you know. But the point is, we should mute that. Um, we'll go on that. We got to mute that one too. Fuck. The point is this. The person will be unnamed. The person will be unnamed. That <laughs> Somebody wanted him to shoot porn. And wow. it was gay porn. And it was great because you know what I did. Hold on, I'm trying to put the mute note in here. You know what I did? I tried to talk him into doing it. So I, I bet get you it. did. Absolutely. I was like, bro, just do it. See what happened. And he was like, no, I'm not doing porn. But it was something that he was like, I don't do porn. But um, let me put it like this. I had a female ask me to do a boudoir shoot with her and her man. I said no. It just made me uncomfortable. Why? You watch porn? How do you know? I do, I but the point is this. I hope not. Now, that, now we got to bleep all this shit. But the point is, um, it made me uncomfortable because I don't like to see people intimate with their partners. And what if they they like? Because what if she like? Oh, we both gonna be naked. And I'm like, cool, because I had already seen her naked because I did a boudoir shoot just of her. And I was like, what if both of them naked? What if I see these balls? What if she slides it in? What if? What's the different? Not I don't want to watch porn live. <laughs> The that's fuck? what it is. I was gonna say there's no difference in people. I'm not saying you particularly, but I'm saying then people watching porn, then you in any you, it's when the this same point thing. is me in the computer. Oh my 
It's not though. You see two people. They don't see me. They ain't paying you no attention, bro. And I was like, "Yo, what they if he smells? Sex? What if you can smell it? Where? What if her badge is not clean that day? What if his balls stink? What if they feet stink? I'm like, I don't have time to be sitting here watching a porn show." And Kevin, they wasn't having sex. Well, I here's the other thing that scared me. I seen several other photography um uh photographers who do couple boudoir, and they all have in like in their things. I if it goes past the shoot i will leave and there'll be no refund and i was i was like clearly they must have seen some balls cock and balls or they why you ask sex. that question i don't want to watch people have sex i'm not they into watching people have sex, sex live oh we going live baby <laughs> you want to expound on why you had to ask that question about sex about discriminating photographers um just wondering that's all okay um is that the only fucking topic we got Curiosity today? Curiosity killed the cat. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I need a new pod partner, man. Um, You already tried to replace me last week with Tequila. And she don't even live here. She sure don't live here. That's why I have to just get her on and get her up out of here. Um, All right. So you brought up something before the pod. What'd I say? Um, Cardi B's photo shoot. It was nice. What you thought about it? I liked it. She did a photo shoot for... It was Bill, for Billboard. For Billboard. They said she was Woman of the Year. So, I wonder like what that. they based all this shit on, but whatever. Something like that. I don't know. Um, but it was really nice. You see her in a different light, different um, vibe mm -hmm. than normal nakedness, stripperness, booty shaking, pussy popping. But I liked it. And she does too. And um, <laughs> I seen... I seen a... Um, I seen the um boy. <laughs> I seen where one of the um an Instagram post or something was saying that uh was saying something that she said I, I'm assuming it was on Twitter. It could have been in the actual billboard article. I really don't recall. Um but she was just basically saying like I know people look up to me um um, because there are women out there that are just like me. She was like, I'm all for justice. I'm all for, you know, you know, the calls and things of that nature. She was like, but I also like popping pussy. <laughs> Inappropriate. <laughs> Inappropriate. But, I mean, I like it because she's being her <laughs> her real authentic self. And I feel like one, and that's the whole nature of my business since but I, they follow me. Um, when you are yourself wholeheartedly and authentically, you shine your light so that others can do the same for themselves like if you be Absolutely. yourself like other people will be comfortable with doing whatever it is that they want to do and not base it off of somebody else or because somebody else is doing it or trying to be like somebody else no just be you and i feel like she's always just herself so for better or for why, worse for everything like yeah. everything is out there when it comes to her marriage her kid maybe not so much her kid but a little bit of her kid mm -hmm. her ups and downs like she shows all of that her political side, she shows all of that. And I feel like that's why people like draw to her. People like her, like Absolutely. her energy, her vibes, because she not faking the funk for nobody. She Never. not doing nothing for anybody else, but for Cardi. And I'm for it. Me Sis. too. Um, We love Cardi. We respect it. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. We can do it's that. It's okay. I said it. <laughs> Thank you. And so uh, we love Cardi. And first of all, the photo shoot was bomb. Um, she always have dope photo shoots, but when you're the biggest star in the world, you better female not that. Yeah, it, like I don't expect her or Beyonce to ever have a trash photo shoot. True. Like Beyonce be shooting in places, and you'll see it, and you'll be like, oh, okay, I see what she's doing there, but it looks very simplistic. But when you see the picture, it's like nothing you've ever seen before, yeah. and it's very, it's always. Let me tell y'all something. Beyonce is taking her photo shoots can be taken with a phone. But the quality, what goes into it, the outfit, the person, um, just the style of editing is done on a real camera. But I'm telling you, you can get that same effect on your phone. But it's just something about her shoes that just look super overly professional. I know? feel like when it comes to celebrities, especially Beyonce and Cardi B or anybody like big and popping like that, like their stature makes people work even fucking harder. Like Absolutely. you not finna half ass Beyonce and Cardi B's pictures. Like Yeah, they're getting them back. You not you know what <laughs> what that damage would do to your career if they be like, oh this photographer, me up. Look what Gavin did. Nothing. 
No, you're right. Um, you know who else got step it up? A couple of people always have bomb photo shoots. She does. Kim Kardashian, say what you want. Her photo shoots are nothing. Her photo shoots always be on point. And a lot of people don't know Drea's photo shoots be fire. Oh, Drea bomb. I like her. Her photo shoots be fire. Um, everybody else is kind of meh. Like uh, Bacardi's always on fire. Rihanna shit is always fire. Mm-hmm. Um, Kim's fire. Uh, Amber Rose when she has a theme shoot is dope, but it's really like breast and butt only. Like, sorry to say it like that, and it, it might be unfair. Um, but them and Drea is like a, a. I encourage if you are a photographer, follow Drea. She actually posts photo shoots that you go. Okay, this is fire. Like this is actual. We talking about Drea Michelle, right? Yeah. Okay. Let me make sure um, she Drea shoots anybody? a lot with a photographer out there in LA. Um, I'm not gonna give his name out just yet because I'm actually writing up an article on on bra. Oh, what yeah. you guys screwing over there? Come on, man. Don't don't do it to me. Um, all right. What so, you doing? <laughs> so for those who not know, um, I'm gonna go through this quick because I don't know enough about it. Pharrell has partnered up hand claps because this is super big. Pharrell has partnered up shit. We don't know Pharrell like that. He also check now. Um, nah, we can't be getting niggas too high of a hand clap. Yeah. Man, they ain't sponsoring this pie. But he's giving away um, a business. Um, we'll be winning $1 million uh, to build a business. And I think it's dope because. Where can I apply? Uh, <laughs> I I'm about money. to tell you right now. So if you go on for Fun. So for those who not know, go to Pharrell's Instagram page. Uh-huh. And once you get on his for Instagram uh, page, um, click the link in his bio. Mm-hmm. And what you do is it'll be something called Black Ambition. Definitely check that out and apply. Now, with that being said, there's a couple of requirements. I'm gonna go ahead and, and stop a couple of y'all from going to look because I already know a couple of y'all niggas better go in there. And y'all not gonna have none of the qualifications. So b- this being a Black and Brown podcast, I gotta let people know. But a million dollars a lot is too much to do something with. Like some of us, um, your business have to. It has to, it can't just be like, yo, man, I'm opening up a restaurant, so I need somebody to, you know, give me some money. I don't think that's how this works, but um hold on, y'all. I'm trying to find this shit. Right there. Click it. All right, man. Oh, and they also have a black ambition uh HBCU prize. Definitely check that out. So you have to be uh the type of business that can apply. Consumer products and services, a design, healthcare, tech. Um, and so with the product and services, a lot of people are probably getting there. It's a business that sells goods sold to consumers for their own use and enjoyment and not means for further economic production activity. Um, so package goods, home goods, food and beverage, fashion or, um, Yep, but does not include music. Oh, I, I qualify for that. Yeah, yeah. So if you think you're about to drop some shit, you want to fund your mixtape? No. For real, hit me up. Just just give it to me. Just give it to her. Um, So definitely check this out. Um, Can non-profits apply? No. <laughs> Y'all are getting government money. Y'all ain't getting no more. Can you reapply next year? Yes. If you do not receive win, you can reapply. So it's definitely a bunch of stuff on so here, So he man. doing this on an annual basis? I don't know. I guess so now. This shit is dope. Well, shit. Well, shit. Um, so definitely, yo, please check this out. Um, and like I said, shout out to Pharrell. If you go to his Instagram page, let me go and follow this nigga from the podcast, so he might for real, just give it for us. real, for yeah. real, um, for real. It's super dope, man. I think that's actually dope because it's like it's so much money. You gonna apply? He already applied. <laughs> I'm here, ain't I? Um. Anyway, I'm hungry. So now we gotta get to the pop culture so we can get through it. Um, all right. We actually making good time at Pop Culture. This is the coolest Bro, we, thing I ever went through. Well, we, we almost had an hour, so I don't know how going, fast. Gotta be going on a rant. Oh, we we about to get there. Um, what is your top music on Apple? So first of all, before we got here, <laughs> <laughs> Gavin said, "Key, what's your top artist on Apple?" I said, "I don't know. I can't find it." Bro, it took her forever. I to can't find, find it. Bro. I don't. It's not popping up in the in Bruh, the Apple Music. Let me tell y'all something. It was tragic. Trying to get we, to, we Googled it and everything. So my top artist, top five. Don't judge me now. Oh gosh. Janae was number one. Okay. <laughs> That's my bitch. Number two was Chris Brown. 
Oh, shoot. I forgot the other ones. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, I'm trying to remember. Number two was Chris Brown. Number three was Kiana Lede. Okay. You know who that is? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Number four. Now, this is before Meg. It was Tory Lanez. I really liked his music, but I haven't listened wow. to him. Wow. I'm just saying. You're going to support the shooter? This was pre Meg. Wow. This was pre Meg incident. Meg, I would never do that. Do you like that, baby? Disclaimer pre Meg incident. I would never, okay? Megan. And then number five was Dreamville, because, you know, shout out to J. Cole. Shout out to the. And Luke, because I like him, and, and Ari, all of them. Yeah, and Kaz, and, um, and Boz. Right. Yeah, all of them. And um, Omen. Omen can really rap. Yeah, I like him. Yeah. Those are my top Paul, five. I like his voice. That's what I meant. Um, so my top five artists, number one was Future. Really? Mm -hmm. That is surprising. I listen to a lot of Future. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm friends with Darnell. Darnell yeah, but that don't you. that don't mean you listen to Future. Yeah, number two is Drake. That's what I would think. Was number number one. three was Travis Scott. He didn't drop an album this year, so that's the only reason why Travis Scott wasn't number one. Um, number four was Pop Smoke. Shout out to the Woo. That should have been number one. I'm mean, gonna tell you, he put on my, in my oh car. Oh my gosh! In my car. I was playing before Pop Smoke passed. I was playing Pop Smoke every freaking day, all day. He was definitely gonna be number one. But even now, like I still listen to it a lot. I know. Um, and then number five, so, who was number five? Oh, Black. You don't listen to no R and B, huh? Black. And then my top five songs. <laughs> look at look have at this. No females. You just you sexist. He sexist. You said do we discriminate? Not when it comes. This ain't got nothing to do with photography. And clearly, I only shoot females pretty much. Um, look at my top five songs. Float. He don't got no females in his top five. Long story, long nights, which is long nights is the intro to flirt. I have females Float. and guys. Can you shut up so I can talk correctly? <laughs> <laughs> so by Black, <laughs> my number one song I listened to all year was Float. Um, number two was Long Nights, which is funny because Long Nights is the intro to Float. Um, but I clearly play Float all the time. Um, Chicago Freestyle was number three, which I love that song. Um not not you too by chris brown well featuring chris brown and drake that's my number four song and y'all know what was number five which would have um and then some surprise jack harlow was number the number six song i listened to which is interesting, which I don't know if that's true. So this in order? No, my on Spotify. So I don't have Apple Music. I got Spotify. I'm saying Apple is probably in order too. Maybe. Oh yeah, you can go to your top played songs. That's on another. It is. It's right here. That's oh what yeah. I'm What's it's the number one song you got? Well, this don't count because when I plug in my phone, it just plays it based off of Apple. No, I count. Don't lie to. But I don't listen to it. It just plays. Right, right. So right. I'm gonna go with number two, which is be number one, which is Janae Speak. That's my song. What's number one? What's the number one it always plays when you plug in? A, B, C, D. That's because it starts with A. Oh, okay. Okay. I got, I got you. I got you now. Um, Yeah. And that's by PNB Rock, but I do listen to PNB Rock, though. Just to let y'all know, WAP made it into my thing. That's how much I played it. <laughs> All the boys was looking at me crazy when I was playing, when uh they was singing WAP and Pussy Fairy at the darn end of the wedding. And I was like, y'all, I know these shits word Yo, for word. Yo, incident at the wedding when, when Britney tossed her flowers. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wanted to hear fucking single ladies, okay? <laughs> nobody, nobody. This the is bride a and groom story. already knew nobody wanted to hear fucking single I ladies. I hate hearing that shit at the wedding. So I was like, before all of this, I was like, Brittany, I hope y'all not playing single ladies. Bruh. She was like, bruh, no, we not playing single ladies. So guess what? The, play what they play. What they play, Gavin. The DJ comes up to the floor and says, "Hey guys, um, I check with the groom and bride. They say they are cool with this." Uh, we're looking for all women to the dance floor. Here we go. He said. And when I tell you, we went crazy. I ran my ass to the floor. Nobody cared. What the fuck? Nah, I ran my ass to the floor. So I might have lied. Uh, weak ass photographers is actually our second highest podcast listened to, which is just me and you. But I was doing the guest today. Anyway, um, so what are we going to next? Oh, 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 oh. We 
So for those who do not know, there was an incident. Hold on, how do we do this, man? Who is this photographer on my timeline? Her her coloring has gotten a lot better, and that's because she probably been having somebody edit her pictures. I know she ain't. That first photo made look like she was missing a leg. Yeah, a lot of photographers don't understand that you can't crop. Uh, you know, some you don't want to cut somebody's limbs off. It you know, so you try not to, but a lot of people just don't. They don't think about it. Um, I'm looking for a thing on here. Shit. Bernie's boat burgers is so fine. Um, let's go to a random topic while I look for this thing. Um, if you could date a celebrity, who would it be? Date a celebrity? Mm-hmm. Probably Jesse Williams. <laughs> I tell you, I've been watching too much Grey's Anatomy. He was like my number. He was above Chris Brown right now. Really? Uh huh. Damn, you just gonna turn your back. You been with him for the longest. <laughs> you just gonna turn your back. He's so fine. Um, for me, <sighs> I don't know though. Man, if I could date Meg the Stallion, it'd be a wrap. Mm. Dead serious. Yeah, I don't have nobody else right now that's on my radar. When I say Meg. <laughs> Where is this damn video? Damn. Um, shit. It's not this. Um, so there was an incident. I can't find it right quick. Of this Dallas restaurant owner who cussed out patrons at his restaurant. He put he cussed out the black girls because they was twerking in his restaurant. And he went on a speech talking about he didn't create this restaurant for dad. He respectable business owner. <laughs> that is the only funny part about this, but uh <laughs> what did he do, Kate? <laughs> um He was upset. He was tight. He was tight. I'm trying to play it right quick so niggas can hit his bullshit. Um and then I'm gonna go in on you niggas. Hold on, we can't play this. It's an ad. Why they ain't playing right here? Why the ad ain't playing? I'm scared this shit ain't gonna play now. <laughs> you don't oh. need to play it. Just, that's what happened. No, no, I got the bottom turned off. Here you go. Courtesy of Team Z. I invested a lot of money into buying this building, into developing this concept, so black people can have somewhere nice to go to, okay? Somewhere where we can feel good about ourselves as a... Come on! Stop the music, please! Mm. Somewhere where our people can feel good about ourselves as a culture, okay? Yeah. Like, no, no, real talk. And so all this twerking and shit, take it to prime, take it to pink, don't bring it here because we're a restaurant. And so beyond that, 75% of my customers are ladies. And I want men to show respect for themselves for how they carry themselves here. So how can I tell the men to respect themselves and you guys are twerking on glass here? If you want to do it, get the fuck out of my restaurant. Because I did it for our people and I did it for our culture. So don't do it, no, don't do it again. I don't want to hear it. If you don't like it, get out because I don't need your money. I need to pr provide something for my people. And don't do it again. Thank you. Boy, bye. <laughs> okay, if it was you, what would you have done? What would have been your next steps? I wouldn't be twerking, but I'm not against people that's twerking. Who the fuck cares? You play hip, you playing hip hop music in your restaurant. You playing throw that ass in a circle. And you have these young people. I'm assuming they're young people, right? Yeah, they look kind of young. They look like young people just having a good time, enjoying the environment that you have created. You have created this ambiance for them. You have created this environment with the music that you're playing. Mm -hmm. And if people want to dance to that song, let them dance. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Um, I've seen so many memes and responses to this showing black people dancing every freaking where at any time, anytime music is played. We Somebody showed a meme. They was dancing to the um, the ice cream truck music song. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have seen. <laughs> I, I hate key. I have seen uh, mixed reactions to this video. I have seen people criticize the women for dancing with no proof that they was dancing. Yeah, cause we don't even know. I'm gonna get there. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have seen people. Salute this man for saying what he had to say. Um, and I've seen people criticize. I'm here to tell this nigga your business won't be open in a year. Whatever kitchen cocktails with two K's. <laughs> ignorant. You won't be open. And I'm going to say this. Um, let me start here. 
we got to get out of this white acceptance shit. He named out other restaurants. Take your shit here. Take the shit here. And I've been seeing other people say, yo, um, y'all wouldn't do this at a white restaurant. Yes, they would. I wouldn't. You know why? Because I don't hear music when I go to white restaurants. Oh, that's true. You got a point. Touche. Take that back. <clears throat> I've never been to fucking Roof Chris and heard music. I might have heard light jazz that is so light that you can barely hear it. I worked at a Ritz Carlton for over almost seven years. Let me tell y'all something. I've seen people twerk in the Ritz. To, I've seen people get up and dance. I've seen people drop a little bit. I didn't see weave come off. I didn't see white people cut up. Um, so let me let me let me just put it like that. And a, a lot of you niggas that's out here that's criticizing um the women for dancing with no fucking proof. You proving my point about white acceptance. Because you don't want people to feel like, oh my gosh, um, you wouldn't do this at a white spot, so why you do it at a black spot? First of all, every time I've heard throw that ass in a circle come on, I've seen Hispanics, blacks, whites, Asians all get up and start dancing. I didn't seen dudes scream. I didn't screamed. We being honest, but <laughs> shut up. But the point, I'm trying to be serious. I'm trying to put, make a fucking point. The point is, y'all got to kill me with that shit. Then the other part of it is, let's scratch that. Let's not even get into this dude's racist practices. And I, and I, uh, let me tell y'all something. If you read, have you seen his dress code? Uh-uh. Oh, let me read out his dress code. No ball caps or casual headgear, durags or heart, hair caps. No slides, especially the fuzzy ones. He has a no tank tops, no body suits, no explicit words or visuals, no jerseys, no sagging pants, no sweatsuits. How you know somebody have on a fucking body suit? I don't know. Um, let me tell you something. Huh? Somebody right now is probably saying he didn't say no black people couldn't wear stuff. It's only black folks that wear those articles of clothing. Not only. That the main demographic that it suffers from these policies is black people. So as a black man, if you're opening up a restaurant and you are attacking the dress code that only really affects black people, then you already know what the fuck you're doing. So you didn't make this for us like you claim you do. You didn't make exactly. this to, for a representation of black people. You you are trying to take all the blackness out of whatever it is that you created so you can please like white folks and the white people like and that's and so when i'm looking at you come out yelling at people you telling them go do this there if you want to do that or as i'm he didn't necessarily say white places but all the people supporting him like oh when you go to roof chris i don't know why the fuck y'all think roof chris is fancy that shit just mm -hmm. overpriced <laughs> okay roof chris is nothing but an overpriced outback I'm giving y'all the I'm giving y'all some pointers right now. It's good. And it's but it's like a yo, I don't go to Outback and Fridays no more. I go to Roof Chris. Y'all, you're not naming some shit that's super fancy. And I'm getting tired of you niggas really acting like y'all really saying something deep when y'all mentioning fucking and, and look, when niggas really want to kill him, ha, ah, you wouldn't do this in Chimas. Shut the fuck up. They don't play that music. But, but, but you could have a white owned restaurant like Fridays. That ain't black owned. You think they ain't playing hip hop music? We be in there twerking though. <laughs> that's what I'm. That but that's my point. Jesus, he's about to knock his head out. But that's my point. I'm angry. The fact whether you are black or white establishment, you are creating the environment. Absolutely. You can't get upset with people for going off the vibe that you are creating. And I don't care if you black, white, Puerto Rican, whatever, Cuban, whatever. Like, and so my final point is this: scratch all that shit. As a black man, um, you don't talk to black women in a way that you're not cool with other races talking to them. Um, I don't find it funny in that screenshot. And maybe it's, let's say it was people there. Um, I don't find it interesting that, um, I find it, I don't, I don't find it interesting. Meaning it didn't surprise me that he came out there saying that shit. And I didn't see not one man in that video. Because as a black man, I would have, A, Told whoever the fuck I was with. Okay, he said, get the fuck out. Let's get the fuck out. I'm drinking this drink. I'm eat well, I'm not paying. You're not going to cuss me the fuck out and think I'm about to do that. Um, also, it's certain topics. And I feel comfortable in saying this. And we'll dig into this a little deeper. Um, um, as a black man, 
it's tough to hear black women criticize black men on the way they're treated. And you have that fight with black women saying, no, are we getting better? Or are we moving in the right direction? And some shit like this pop up because then it's taking us back. Now we got to rehab that argument in our community. Um, and I'm not here to say other races don't talk to their women that way. Cause I've heard white men address white women and say things that I would never say to white women. I've also heard Hispanic people. I have a Hispanic family. All right. They're Ricans. I want to get on the Hispanic people real quick, but go ahead. But so you can, but what I'm saying is in hearing that, like in dealing with them, they say certain things somewhere. I don't fucking know. Cause I can't pronounce them, but they say things that I would not say. Go on. Why no Konyo? I do. Meal. Okay. The point is, this is supposed to be serious and I'm supposed to be angry. Can't you hear the anger in my voice? But no. not, but, but, but if, seriously, when you come out and you tell black women, take that shit somewhere, get the fuck out. I don't need your money. Let me tell you what make this world moves. Women of color will shut your shit the fuck down and have no remorse. I was telling my wife, I've never seen a business go under quicker when black women say we've had a fucking enough. And they get you the hell up out of there and you be looking stupid. Put and some respect on our name. Absolutely. But then you come out there and you say that and you need them. Tuh. I'm not even, never mind, I'm not even going to do that. But you, you don't do that, especially in a group of women. And like, what what you think this shit is about to be like? Because see, now what's going to end up happening is, um, I don't, I don't know him. I don't know if he has children. I don't know if he, ha- children, excuse me. I don't know if he has aunts sisters a mother but it's it's and it's also shocking to me that black men are out here defending this nigga and then i'm like okay cool i know you got a daughter you cool with somebody talking to your daughter like that whether she was twerking or not you cool with somebody talking to your daughter like that no okay i don't give a f- like we've been at bars and you we've all been at bars and we've seen girls on a bar dancing the environment was created for them. Whether that that bar was not in was not created for people to dance on it, but now people are dancing. You know what happened? The bouncer say, "Hey, get down." They don't say, "Yo, if you want to do this, take your ass to Honest exactly. and go dance." No, they say, "Get the fuck down." No, we're not doing that. And also, I felt like his message could have been to me. You take out the cuss words, your message get across. You good to go. Delivery was wrong. Your delivery was completely wrong. I'm not a disagreeing with your messaging. Um, I now, however, I do have a problem with you wanting white acceptance. I don't care what nobody say. That's what the fuck it was. Also, I think you got racist dress code policy. Also, and but the main thing for me, scratch the other two, even though I think they're important. My main thing is you addressing black women in a way that you wouldn't like nobody that's named that shares your last name to be addressed as. So that's my thing. What you was gonna say? Well. That goes into what Nick Cannon said. What the thing I post today? Okay, so then, okay. Now I have to go flip sides of the book because Key sent some bullshit. I didn't send you anything. I posted it on my story from Reza. I forgot his last name, but I think he's Islam, Islamic, but I follow him. Oh, and you could he, tell that nigga Muslim. Yeah. He posted, <laughs> um, he posted a clip of him on Nick Cannon's podcast. And he said, and, hold on. We can just play right okay, here. We can play it. It's not that long. It's not. Oh, it's up. What the fuck? The fuck, bro? It's not up. What? This is the slot. No, it's not. It's the second one, ain't it? Oh, it's right here. Oh, fuck. So you're telling me. Oh, the black okay. woman started over. Yeah, yeah, sorry. This podcast. This is why we need to have people white on staff. White women are looked at as success yes. in America. When Lies. you see a white woman, I couldn't have you. My daddy mm-hmm. couldn't have you. My granddaddy couldn't have you. Mm-hmm. I would get killed even looking at mm-hmm. you. So now, now if I play you. for the NBA, I want them all. Mm-hmm. So you're telling me. The black woman who has been there for us the whole damn time, when we were getting lynched, when we were getting whipped, who was there for us to heal our wounds. This is Risa. You can give up on a black woman so easily. You don't deserve no other woman because you have demonstrated that mm. you can't give enough love to the number one who needs it the most. Period. Because she has been destroyed the most, rejected the most. She is the number one divorced, last married, most mistreated, and you telling me Thanks. that because now you have money, mm. now I'm free to go mess with the same white woman who helped to keep me in slavery. Selfish black brothers, mm-hmm. selfish who want to. Did you ask was this nigga Islam and his name is Rizza Islam? Is oh, fuck. I didn't ask. I said he was. Oh. <laughs> no, I think I take some brown sugar over some white cancer causing sugar any day. <laughs> white but women are looked at as success yeah. in America. We see a white. <laughs> I said he is Islam. Islamic is what I said. 
So what's but your take? um, yeah. What? Who what's your take? Who would think that Nick Cannon would feel that fucking way? I would never guess that he would have that mindset. About what? Saying that about white women. I wouldn't be surprised. I am surprised. Why, Wholeheartedly Mar- Mar- surprised. Mar- no, not oh. even because of who the fuck he dated, but because Maybe. of whatever, <laughs> but because of who, like what he has represented it in some parts, maybe not all, maybe I'm missing some stuff. I really don't know. Mm-hmm. As far as him, you know, did he, like, I just, I just don't, I just would never, I would just would never guess that he would have that mindset about white women. I, I don't even know how that to black men see them as a prize. Yeah. Winner. But yeah. he would, from my understanding, he was saying as though like they see him as a prize, but they're not. Is that what you took of it, or you took it? No, as I took I I took it as, and maybe and and that was a snippet. This is we a have snippet, to, so yeah, we yeah. don't know. So maybe you got a point. It could be that. Well, okay. So I think it, let me tell you why I think is that because he, if you listen to Cannon's class, it's a lot of black power stuff. Okay, there. see this like this a is lot of I'm his episodes okay. are. Sorry, okay, so Nick. now I, I get, like you, bro. <laughs> yeah, because when you posted it, I was like, here we go again. And you was like, what? And I was like, we can have the conversation on the pod because I, me personally, let me put it like this. I was confused. I was wholeheartedly. I'm like, why would oh, he say that? No, See, I no, took no, no. it as like he put in white people, white women on this pedestal. Oh, no, nah, like, you got to listen to his pod. He be getting in trouble. Okay. For the shit he be okay, got you. That's was, why he that's lost his I'm job. Saying, like, lost his job, <laughs> like how he is, like his businesses, like he put black people, like he there for us. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. why the fuck would he say that? So yeah, that's why. He, maybe his interpretation was that because once again, that is a snippet. It's like mm-hmm. a minute, 30 oh, nah. seconds. If so. I had to guess, that's what I was saying is probably what he was going at because a lot of his pods, are like that they are black power they are pretty okay. much like like whatever and he probably worried. breaking it down <laughs> nah and um i guess for me man um when you had wrote that only thing i was thinking of is like i don't think that mindset exists anymore me personally um and i think and i'm glad we ain't try to have this text conversation because it wouldn't have went over like that it would have been like wait what this you know but for me I, I was listening to it and i was like hey all the black men i know um let me like this. Black women have a, a different view on black men uh, than uh, black men have a, a view on black men. That's what I'm trying to say that. So let me say it like this. That makes sense. I don't know any black men who put white women on a pedestal. Let me just put it like that. Personally. Yeah, personally, I don't. I don't know any. And so whether it's personal or whether it's like me meeting them or me and you know even athletes now i don't know how many athletes or like celebrities whatever um i be looking i'm like i don't ever see them brag about white women now i'm not saying it's not there i just don't personally see it now when i say that i say the reason why i I led with i think black women um y'all see black men differently because y'all date black men Mm -hmm. and you might have experienced a black man just being like, eh, and then he likes a white women. Also, I don't see black men. Now I'm saying that, I actually do know one one black dude who put a white woman on a pedestal. I was going to say, I don't know. I've seen, I don't know if, there's this, only one though. There's a TikTok of these young, they're young black kids. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those little split things where they, you go up to it and you pick a side. And mm-hmm. one was black women, one was white women. They all went to the white women. Mm. And I'm like, y'all 12. I, Sorry, I call everybody 12 that look like they <laughs> under 21. But they look like they was maybe in, in high school or college. Mm-hmm. And like like the mindset and the 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 image that you're putting out to other people, like this is fucking acceptable. It's not okay. Like all y'all mothers are fucking black. Yeah. And it well, see, my thing is I think black women, um, I think there's need to, I don't Oh, Lord, he trying not to get in trouble. What you about to say? I think we need to have a conversation on if a black man likes a white woman or a, if he likes someone that's not black, does that mean he's downgrading to put down black women? No. It, well, see, I think we know those conversations. Like, to be transparent, I have black women all the time who DM me because my wife is Puerto Rican. Now, to be fair, I think 60% of them don't know she's Puerto Rican. And they don't know you. And uh, of a hundred percent don't know me. Yeah. Um, that plays a part too. Absolutely. And so I think sometimes, Oh, you know what? I'm gonna start screenshotting some shit and sending it to you because I'll say something and people like, Oh, but your wife ain't black. And I'm like, 
the fuck are we talking about? I feel like somebody has said that to me before about you. And I was like, y'all do know Gavin has only dated black women. Yeah, and that's what I said. And I was like, yo, what? A, and I think some, and so what I'm saying that to say, sometimes you deal with um, the black men I know that I talk to, even the ones that have dated white women, it was just like, oh, I'm dating her because I, I rock with her. Oh, Amir gonna be mad. He can't get on the pod because we use my phone to record. But, you know. <laughs> Hello there. But, you know, it's that. But some of it, you know, um, and also, and let me to put it like this. Black men, when it comes to black women, when they date other races or other, uh, yeah, other races, I think uh, black men, I think they don't look at black women putting us down automatically, um, especially when they already see it. And trust me, some, even the white dudes I know, they like black women. Somebody. Who said I seen it in the comments of that video. They were saying, "No, no, you said that." Yeah. <laughs> it was Should Gavin. we repeat that? It was Gavin. <laughs> yeah, I said it. Okay, what I said was so people don't want to know. I said in there, I said, "Yo, black men like black women. White men like white women. I don't know not black one women. Black women. I <laughs> said I don't know not one race that put white women on a pedestal. That was what exactly what I said." That's what I said. That's exactly. Now we have to bleep that one day. We can, but shit, we gonna have to. Uh, once we get too famous, I'm gonna have to go back to this episode and be like, bleep. My but, thing, my but, thing. But it's a pedestal. Not saying I know no race doesn't value them or love them or treat them right, but like put them on a pedestal. The only race that I know that put their women on a pedestal as low as it has some black women might see it, is black women. I don't see no other race celebrate their women. I really am now. To be fair. I follow a lot of black people, mostly black folks, but that's that. But what you saying? I feel like sometimes black women just see it and just automatically make their own assumptions when they see uh, a black person dating somebody other than black, other than black. Yeah. And so here's my thing. I don't like when I hear black men um, say certain things about black women as to the reason why they wouldn't date them. Me either. I don't like that shit either. Like, don't, don't, you don't have to down us to make yourself feel so what, better about what, your choices because we don't give a fuck about who you date. Wholeheartedly, see, I don't agree with that part. Wholeheartedly, <laughs> majority of black women don't care about who you date. Yeah, absolutely. As long as you're not downing well, I don't us. I agree with that. Sorry, but good. <laughs> as long as you're not downing us in the process of who you date, I agree with that. We do not care. What? The minute you start talking about black give me women, an example. Black women this and they do this and they don't they got an attitude and they and they loud and they nap, got nappy hair. Like those are not legit reasons for you to not date somebody. Do they um how does that conversation come up? Cuz um, I've never had nobody ask me why don't they black women cuz the only person I've not dated that's not black is my wife. But right, so nobody needs to ask you that. Absolutely not. But how does that conversation come up? Cuz I hear black women say that a lot like, "Oh, I don't see like don't downplay us." to elevate your choice i don't and think I'm it's like, um so i'm like do you ever be like do you ever talk to them like yo why you don't date black women or like how does that even come up or it's just like y'all talking about dating and then black men just start ragging and I don't, or what i don't think it's more so of a conversation i think it's social media mm. you can see somebody post something a black okay. from a, a you can clearly see their account they are a black male and they post something downgrading a black woman and say oh see this is the reason why i don't don't need this. okay i got you so i don't think it's ever been in which it, it's probably a good thing you know it probably should happen that's where a conversation needs to come in so we can have some understanding or at least get some type of you know clarity as to understand each other side as to why you do it because that can't be your reason like you can't say i don't want to date a black woman because she got coily hair what? No, nah, I think that don't, that don't. I think it's just pure ignorance at that point. Like, I mean, um, like I, I said, I've never really, here. I've never really met a a dude who was like, I only date white women, or I don't date black women, but I know a dude, and I know him. I worked with him for a long time, and he only dated white women, and I just remember like we had a discussion like. Uh, about Black History Month, he was pissed. We had Black History Month, and he was pissed that BET is this and I. So he was racist. Um, sure. Basically, I don't know. How to, basically, like he he had an issue with it. I think I think Black people, not all Black people. I think a very small portion actually, and I think it's some of. I think this goes back to slavery time. Sometimes we, I think Black people struggle with white acceptance. Like I don't know how else to address it. Um. 
And sometimes, and I'm not saying we all deal with it still to today. Sometimes we, you know, we, oh, you talk like you black. And then as you got older, you realize like, hold on, no, I'm just, this is the way I talk. I'm still intelligent. Um, Or it's like, oh, I need to act like this on an interview because I need this white man to like me. Or black women saying, I'm going to wear my hair this way so I can get this job. So I won't, you know, whatever is complying. To me, compliance is, you know, to this society, sometimes it's just white acceptance. I'm not saying, um, anyway, I said what I fucking said. The point is this. I think we all struggle with that from time to time. And as we all grow, we learn that you can be yourself and there's avenues for you to be accepted. This podcast was created to help black people, black photographers and brown photographers because Hispanics go through it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've only learned that because of my wife, you know what I'm saying? And part of that is this podcast was created because there are certain things that black photographers, they felt like I need to shoot white folks so I can be accepted in that community so I can do their weddings. Does that mean black people spend less on weddings? No. The most expensive wedding I've ever been to is when I was working, not I was shooting. Um, they were from they were from the Middle East. Just to put it in perspective, you know what I'm saying. The second one I've been it's 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 not white folks. You know they do have huge weddings. Let me say it like that. But when I was working at the Ritz and I was literally working these weddings, it wasn't you know it was the black weddings was just. They were more extravagant. I don't know the price tag, but I'm telling you when I went out there and I'm like, okay, buddy, you know, but sometimes as a black photographer, you feel like, oh no, I need the white photographers or I need a white, uh, whatever the case may be. So I keep that in mind there. Um, shit. All right. Let's speed through these, uh, mulatto colorism. Keep keep, keep going. Let's keep going on this racist color, black, white mix train. What'd she say? Uh, I don't know. We, this came up in discussion. I was laughing. She was saying that colorism. I guess she said colorism don't exist. And then somebody pointed out your your name is Mulatto. Now she want to change her name to Big Lotto. I don't think she can rap anyway, but I don't care. She's twenty one. What was she on before this? I seen a screenshot of her like on some yeah, talk we, show. Um, she on a talk show. She was on or something. Um, JD show. Oh, Amanda she was Freak. on that. Yeah, she was. Oh, on, that's how. That's wow. how she got. She won. But she was her. I guess her, either her, or her family, her dad was her manager. Was mm-hmm. like he ain't offering enough money, so they went independent. Oh, that's good. I guess that is good. I mean, you sign a so so deaf, you're gonna be signed to somebody else. You don't really need a label nowadays, even though I know shit about the music industry. But I listen to the Joe Budden podcast. You do not need a label. I just needed to eat the net. We all know that. But even like these YouTubers think they need a manager. You don't need a fucking manager for YouTube. You don't. Funny enough, I was in Clubhouse, the app Clubhouse, and uh, I got stuck. Do you know what Clubhouse is? Clubhouse is an app where, for those who not know, Clubhouse is like a meeting room app, um, but it's invite only, and you pretty much go in there, and you can only talk. You can't type. You can't say, but it'd be like Kevin Hart was on Clubhouse, and he was cussing people out for saying his special is whack. Joe Budden be in there. He be, I don't know Joe Budden getting paid or something, but he be in every fucking Clubhouse meeting. And he's, his shit be on mute and he just sit there. It might be his. No. Well, I think they make him a moderator so people can get notified. People like me and say, Joe Budden's in the Clubhouse right now. And he don't be saying shit. He literally don't say shit. But I was in one. It was for, um, I was in a meeting that was for, I'm, I'm 40 and single trying to date. And they called my name out. Why are you married? Key, I was just randomly. So what happens is if you go, I don't know if I don't. It might be a user Love, error. please don't let me be forty and single. <laughs> I was on Clubhouse, Jesus and Christ. I uh, I clicked on something, and I was trying to exit out, but it didn't exit out. So they were still talking, and it was like, all right, Gavin, uh, we're about to wrap up. But if you want to tell us about your dating life, man, and the struggles you're going through, and they were like, just wave, and we'll let you speak. And what'd you say? I'm married. I said, soup, 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 soup. Got up out of there. I was like, yo, I ain't got to shit to talk about this. Um, Lord, now- please don't let me be 40 and single. Because, you know, I'm not one of those. <laughs> I hate Gavin. I, sleep. I seriously, I can't stand him. I'm not one of those people, independent women, be like, oh, I'm good. I'm by myself. I don't need no man. No, I, I, I like help. Somebody can help me. Um, Please. You ever had a crazy ex? Help me. No, I have not had a crazy ex. Me either. And have not been a crazy ex. Me either. I mean, loss is loss. I'm a um a sap and very emotional. So if somebody breaks <sighs> my heart, me. like I get, don't go to tell me. I get really, really upset. 
Uh, this comes from a woman who uh, she created a dating profile of her now ex new girlfriend. And she said she was selling pussy and meth and fiends was lined up at the door. Dead ass. Um, you want to go through this trouble thing? I don't even know who that is. He's a rapper from Atlanta. Really? Now you're going to make me I don't be keeping it. up with these rappers. When he was, somebody asked him about, would you let Drake fuck your wife for a feature? Yeah. He going to fuck her for free. So what's the point? I guess so what did he say? They going to fuck him for free. <laughs> I just said that. Fuck him for free anyway. If he slide into a DM, y'all soft. A hey, niggas don't reply to me either. You'll never understand a street nigga mental. On oh, Lord. <laughs> I wonder, like, if Drake sliding, if Drake sliding your girl's DM, do you get mad at her or not? Do you get mad at her? Do you get mad at him? Nah, you don't. Like, you don't get mad at him. Drake. Gonna smash whoever he want to smash. But why would you get mad at her if he sliding her DM? She ain't done shit. Yet. Well, if she fuck. Oh, only if she getting a check, right? No, I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Ha, for any imagine if your girl come home with a Drake candle. Apparently, Drake passed out them candles. Imagine that. That'd be funny as fuck. I swear, if Rena came home with a candle, she's like, <laughs> "What you gonna do? You ain't gonna leave her." Sure ain't. I ain't got time. I, I always tell my wife, "Half your house gonna be gone." Hell nah, Gavin. You, okay, <laughs> house is gonna be all right. Gavin, don't think you sure know don't. in the North Car- in the North Carolina. I don't. Jesus. I haven't looked up the law, but she ain't getting it. You, she looked up the law. She didn't. Who called me? Text me. Oh, right. Gavin, don't think. If him and his wife get divorced, he going to keep his ha- No. I'm keeping. Y'all going to have to sell it and split the profit. Nah, buddy. <laughs> um, all right. We got no question today because I'm hungry as shit. Shake that ass, bitch. Shake that, Last shake minute that highlights. Ass, um, Rappers who dealing with the FBI, please pull y'all shit together. Casanova, uh, G Herbo. G Herbo, uh, stolen credit cards went international. They ran up a million dollars on false credit card why he got stolen credit cards i don't know it's apparently his team and he's just a part of it but apparently he gave it okay but that is a big i always laugh you know it's funny because people that buy drugs i always laugh at them when they pay for their drugs through cash app and i'm like damn you trying to catch a federal charge that one stop i need to go over there and start it um yeah can you do that for me because i'm about to say some shit that's important hurry up you gonna kick me out? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Um, for those who can't see me, I kind of need Key to go back over there. Thank you, Key. Thank you. Um, so for those who not know, uh, so yeah, Casanova, I pray he's wanted by the FBI. They tweeted that nigga picture. I was like, God, Lee, and fair time is not no real time, which is funny now because like, the feds, I have, I, I know it sounds crazy, but I have every, I really believe that Casanova is really in this G Herbo thing, got something to do with Takashi. Sit your black ass down. You got black pants on? Um, because I'm like, yo, this nigga come home and now people that used to talk shit about him getting locked up. I think it's freaking interesting. <laughs> um, the Houston Rockets and the... Washington Wizards just traded Westbrook and John Wall. Nobody knows why I have that here because it's a sports thing. I find it super funny. Those are the two worst contracts. I think those two and Chris Paul, but Chris Paul's deal looks a lot better now um, because he's still productive. But Westbrook and John Wall have the worst two NBA contracts in the league, and they just got traded, and I don't know who won or lost that. I feel so bad for Bradley Beal. I'm praying for you, brother. Um, LeBron just got a bag. Key, guess how much money LeBron makes per second? Uh, two hundred. Um, so do- what? I- it's a second. I know. I was trying to give him some money. I don't know. He makes a dollar and thirty six per second. So let's calculate that for eight hours. <laughs> a third one thirty six second times sixty. That's sixty seconds is one minute. So he makes makes eighty one dollars and sixty cents a minute. Damn. No. Yeah, damn. That's got to be more than that. No. 
He makes a dollar and thirty six per second. You times that by sixty. That's how much he makes per minute. A minute. Then you time that by sixty. That gets oh, you the hour. Run. Oh, that's a lot. And then you times that by eight. That's a lot. That's what, this is an hour. Yeah, times that by eight. Let's see what he making our work days. Forty thousand. It's dumb. 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 Oh. Dumb. Uh, shout out to LeBron. Um, anything less? Let me get nine thousand a day. I'll be good. Okay, buddy. Um, anything before we go? You got anything to say? Anything? Any shouts out? Anything you want to give out to the people? Nothing? Okay. This podcast is hey, hey, fucking hey, drowning, hey, buddy. Hey, drowning hey, like hey. shit. Clearly, you're not drowning. You had a lot of ups this year. Oh, yeah. Clearly. Duh. You just be talking cash shit. Well, I'm trying to find a song. Please I don't. I just start twerking. Gavin gonna kick me off the podcast just like homeboy kicked them girls hey, out. Hey, man. Pulling up in that new toy, the I can't twerk to this. Boy, rock star, Are you on twerk like song? Pink. Nah, yeah, you no. play whatever your heart desires, sweetheart. Oh, I got you, man. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. I got Tory Lanez in here. I gotta take this nigga up out of here. Poor Tory. Hold on, man. I ain't got no no shits in here. Damn this.